Okay, so if you watched my uh, last video, part two on this uh, 2000 Honda Civic, uh, you'll know we have an issue with the thermostat housing and with the top bolt works perfectly fine, the bottom bolt is stripped out and needs to be replaced and it can't actually seal without uh, that bottom bolt being able there to hold it in place. My parts finally came in to help us fix this. Uh, here we have a bunch of 6mm all thread, about 200 mils of it, and some actual high strength red thread locker. This stuff usually you have to hit with a torch to be able to get it undone. Now we're trying to do this in such a way that we can do it in the car and not have to remove the engine. This is a just spare D16Y7 engine block I've had laying around. Uh, I wish it was usable, but it is not. The mounts are cracked and everything on the engine, so I'm not able to use it. But what I am able to do is mock stuff up on it. First, I'm going to go over an explanation on why uh, the threads are stripped on that hole and what we can do about it. So on the back of this engine block, we've got these two holes. These are the two holes that are in concern. This one still has thread that's good in it. This one, on the other hand, does not. Here's the typical bolt that would be used in these. Now here's the back of the block where it would be sitting against the transmission. If you notice, this hole goes all the way through. If we thread this bolt in, it'll thread in and then generally it will stop when the thread's on the bolt in. That is not the case in this one. I believe it's actually going, it'll go through the threads and then when it gets to the end, it will slip and it'll wind up hitting right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all thread in and we're gonna put that high temp strength, uh, high strength thread locker on it and we're gonna make this a actual studded system. So the stud will come out thermostat housing will sit over it but the top bolt will be the one that gets tightened because it actually needs this bottom one for alignment uh, whereas the top one actually needs to be tightened but I do want to have it to where I can tighten the bottom one so that's what our goal is going to be so here's what our all thread looks like all the way in you can see it's butted against the casting here it's solid here's the all thread out the side it's definitely longer than it needs to be but we can fix that up we'll cut it down and get it where we need so mocking this up here's the thermostat housing and we'll slide this on over this and then we'll take our upper bolt and put it here. So this is what I'm going for here. So notice the bottom part's not entirely tight but if we tighten the top part it'll keep this whole thing still. Now in the bottom on the stud what we can do is we can cut this, give it a relief so that we can unscrew the stud if anything ever happened and we need to replace it. But main goal is going to be uh, getting this cut down, marked and cut down where we need it so that we can put a nut over the top of it and tighten it down. And then that way the thermostat housing will be solid. So tighten down, this is solid as hell. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. I'll probably put a Honda nut down here so that it'll have more surface area to grab onto, but that's solid. And the best part about this is I'm gonna flip the engine block over to keep it where it needs to be, and then I can mark it and cut it while the block's upside down, and I'll be able to get that perfect. So here's it flipped over where it's easier to get to, and we'll be able to come down. We've got plenty of room under here to work on these, so. I'm thinking probably about here. That way we'll have plenty of room for a lock nut if we need it and uh, plenty of room for relief to be able to undo the stud if we ever need to. So here I cut the all thread down with my metal cutter. Just used a cut off, Harbor Freight cut off tool. 
cut it down the way I needed it. The way I gauged it was, here's the longest small 10 millimeter I have, and it'll fit right on there. So that gives me enough room. You always want to put your nut on first. That way after you cut it, you can unthread it and it'll recut the threads on the end. So here I got out the bench grinder and gave myself some flat edges and tapered it down to a square. And then that way, um, if anything ever happened and this needed to come out, uh, you could hit the bottom of the stud with a torch to release the thread lock and then put an adjustable wrench here and then back it out. So I found a spare Honda nut that looks perfectly at home there. So I'm going to say I think this is going to work. Okay, so the thermostat housing is off the car now. And I'm going to come in and our hole for our stud is going to be down here. I'm going to come in with brake cleaner with a straw and I'm going to spray that area down as good as I can so our thread locker will have something to stick to. Okay, so I went back to the spare engine block and marked <clears throat> how far up on the bolt I need to put thread lock uh, to make sure that this seals or actually goes into where some threads are. So this stuff uh, is immediate, so they want you to shake it up and then put it on and stuff it in as fast as possible. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that on camera because my tripod's all buried. But uh, this should work, and I'm going to put this in. I've got the hole cleaned out and let it air out. So I've put these two nuts on the end of it to help me screw it in, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the stud's in there. I ran it in. It feels like concrete. I mean, it's there. So I coated it with a liberal amount of red thread locker and used just a ratchet on these nuts locked on here and it's down I mean it's there so that's that's solid so we'll set things up and see if we can get the thermostat housing on so it appears there's not enough room to take a thermostat housing and put it on and then flip it down onto the pipe there's a little bit of a clearance issue I think I'll have to take the intake off because if I could get the pipe, I can push this down, and if I can get the pipe up a little bit with the PCV and the uh, intake out of the way, I think I can get it on without the intake on. And then I'll just bolt it down and then put the intake back on. So I think that'll be the route I'll have to take. Because as of right the second with it together, it doesn't give me enough clearance. But if I can take the intake off and eke it on there, that's a very small sacrifice I'm willing to make because the o-rings are new and thermostat housing's almost new so it's like put it on there it'll last by the time those o-rings go bad again anyway after being replaced you'll have to take the intake manifold off because you'll have to do maintenance again so I figure if I can take the intake manifold off and find a way to make this fix work then uh, it should be good so let's play good news and bad news. Good news is, is that it worked. It actually worked. Bad news is, is that the stud I mismeasured and I measured for the Y8 housing instead of the Y7 housing that I'm gonna use on this because it's in almost new shape. Problem is, is that it's slightly too long. As in, I can't get my longest 10 millimeter on it. So that's a problem. But I did manage to get it to fit by moving the PCV valve box out of the way enough to be able to maneuver the pipe. After that, it all went back together, and that's actually sealed and, like, doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I figured out my mistake. But there's apparently a small difference in the Y7 and Y8 thermostat housings. They're both exactly the same, except for, of course, the winter assist. Um, but these on the lower bolts on the Y8 have a tube that's the same length as this. So it comes out to about here. 
this one's a lot smaller so when you put this on with that long stud that I cut for the Y8 housing it's way too long to get a socket over it so I wound up using a Y8 housing which was the old one I cleaned it up as good as I could I didn't entirely trust it but I think it's because of this issue alone not really the housing so I took sandpaper and polished up the gasket surface on the back of the housing and threw it back on there and I mean it fit like a glove it's just solid so that fix definitely worked as far as everything fitting the way it should be because it's taut but yeah I'll uh, get it buttoned back up and we'll throw some water in it and see what this thing can do so this is the moment of truth got everything back together and I filled the radiator and as much of the system as I could with water first because I like to use Xerox Asian Blue because it will make your head gasket last longer it doesn't corrode as bad as like conventional green antifreeze conventional green antifreeze corrodes real bad so I like the blue stuff anyway um, I'm doing water first so that I can get the try to get the remaining uh, green conventional antifreeze and the copper seal that was left in it out. Um, I also don't want to waste good antifreeze if there's possibly a leak. So this will be the run to see if there's a leak or not. I think I'm going to sit this here. That way if there's any leaks, maybe the camera can see it. All right, here we go. I guess I'll have to switch out batteries. Moment of truth, take two. Another battery. So thermostat just opened. Got the heater on max, so when the thermostat opens, it goes into the heater core. Just had to replenish some of the coolant. Probably the air bubble and the heater cord. Let it run with the thermostat open and get the remaining air bubbles out. Squeeze the hose, it kind of helps with that. We're looking good so far, no leaks. We got no dripping on the bottom of the engine. Holy shit, I think I fixed it. I think that did it. Definitely working because now I'm getting all the green shit and the uh, copper seal coming up. Feels good, looks good. Tell yeah, the water pump's working because the level of the coolant will come up whenever you rev it. It's not spraying out the top, but it's there. You can see right here. 
That's normal. That's the pickup of the uh, water pump. Excellent. That's an awesome water pump. Okay, so no leaks have been detected. I'm going to cut it off and leave it off for a bit and see if there's any leaks. And if there's not any leaks, then uh, I'll get this drained out and put some actual Xerox coolant in it. So this was a massive success. You can, in fact, fix a lower stripped lower bolt on a thermostat housing on a D16 Y8 or Y7. So the all thread that I had bought was 200 millimeters long and I cut it down to 135 mil to use as a stud for this. So 135 millimeters is what you're looking, looking at to make a stud for your uh, lower thermostat housing. After this, we'll be able to move on to suspension and I still have another motor mount that I've got to replace. So we will continue on the build. So this is what water, green conventional, and copper seal looks like when drained back out. Uh, this whole oil jug was cleaned with brake cleaner, so there's not even a lick of oil in there. That's all what came out. So we're going to do another flush on that. So I uh, flushed the cooling system once and got the radiator flushed a couple times to get most of the yuck out. There's still a little bit, you can kind of see the film right there, of the junk that's left in here. You can see a little bit of the copper seal floating around in there. We do want to get that out, so I'm going to have to get the battery charged and get this running again and get it warmed up and then flush the system a couple more times because I want it nice and clear, or as clear as I can get it because this is what was flushing out. So in the future, we have all of that to put in. We got all that to put in. Well, except for that, that's spares. But that to put in. All of these to put in. Trail arms. Much other of uh, suspension components. I think there's a rear control arm in there too, so we're going to get this thing completely redone.